Hello everyone, it looks like we're live. I'll wait just a moment and make sure that you guys, that the audio and everything is working. Um, somebody tell me, there's always a delay. So by the time you hear me say that, I'll probably have moved on. Um, audio is, oh, video audio check, there we go. Okay, um, thanks Nick. Tonight we are painting a guinea pig and whoa, the lighting is not accurate on that at all. I've already painted my canvas a solid gray. This is a Fredericks watercolor canvas board and this was provided just for transparency by Fredericks. They, I don't like most canvas boards, they work really bad. The Fredericks ones are awesome. Just for transparency, I'm sponsored by Fredericks. They were already the only canvas I used and they did provide me with the canvas that I'm using here tonight. So this one, the reason I'm going with a watercolor canvas board with acrylics, I don't use them for watercolor, I use them for acrylics and sometimes oils. They're so smooth. So for fine detail, for really smooth blending, they will make your life so much easier than a, a surface like a, even in the Pro Series, like the Pro Series, uh, what is theirs? The Dixie canvas, the real heavy Fredericks canvases. Those are better for like painting with a palette knife, that really heavy, chunky paint. But when you want smooth blending, fine detail, the smoother the surface, the better. And these watercolor canvas boards are wonderful. My next choice is on that. Like if I'm doing a bigger painting, the Fredericks Blue Label or Belgian Linen my, are my other favorites. Okay, all of the supplies I'm listed are using tonight are listed in the video description, and the reference photo is also in the video description. So before anyone complains that they wish my reference photo was on the screen, I've had several ask me to get rid of the dogs and put the, the photo there instead. You can just download it and put the photo anywhere you want. Link is in the description. My chair's thing is falling apart. Hold on. Do you think I'd remember to do that before streaming? There we go. Um, and okay, I think we are good. So I already painted this a dark gray. You can cut, actually. You can probably see the, the accurate gray here. It's a very dark gray. Um, before I started, just so that I wasn't fighting against the white of the canvas. So if you are painting along with me right now, go ahead and do that. We've got from Kirsten a, oh wait, let's not say it too loud. Do I even have any of these? I brought the other treats in. Oh, I do have a little bit left of the good ones. They know, they heard Kirsten's name and went, well, we know it's, it. look at Gibson already licking his lips. You got tilty head, Gibson? Oh, no, lay down. I didn't call you. Oh, man. And look how fast he lays down. No, down. He lays down much faster when he thinks he's getting a treat. Well, he knows he's getting a treat. Okay, you can come get a super chat. Okay, come. Oh, and we've got two. I'm going to do this in two separate ways. Otherwise, I found last week, Gibson stands there thinking he's getting a second right away. Okay, get one. And we've also got another suit. Well, I'm going to say that after. We'll make them eat that. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. Trust me, you want to do this quickly. You're going to be happy about it. Go lay down. Lay down. Because you have a special second surprise. Lay down. Gibson, wait. Down. And from Karen Montoya Paints, we've got another super chat. Look at the tilty head. Okay, come here. I love the tilty head on greyhounds. It's got to be the cutest thing. There you go. Two in a row. Good boys. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. Oh, that was good, huh? Okay, go lay down. Go lay down. Lay down. Go on. They're like, oh, we know it's over. Look, oh, I'm missing a dog. Gibson, lay down. Gibson, down. Funny dogs. Okay. And of course, we've got dragon in the background back there basking. Okay, wrong camera, there we go. So I've already got this again, like I said, we started that with the dark gray and I did not pre-draw out my guinea pig. He's actually drawn out on, over here on a piece of tracing paper and I'll use tracing and transfer paper to transfer the image cleanly once I get the background filled in. But I want a sort of bokeh look. Now I'm not going full bokeh with the circles just because that would take too long for tonight, but I do want an out of focus soft background. And I am just going to do this in black and white first and then I'm going to glaze color over it because why not make our lives more simple if we can? Because I wanted a grayish tone anyway. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my brush. See how I'm mixing water in like that right there? Just puddle of water. And I just lost my light there. Why does that light keep going off? Um, there we go. So I'm pulling some water in here. I'm gonna get a little bit of black paint, some white, maybe a little bit more than that. That, that is a little bit too runny. So we'll go pull a little bit more paint into that. If it's too thin, this isn't gonna be a fun time. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this. I'm actually going to take my fine mist sprayer. We'll lightly mist that. 
this is a very similar gray to what I already have. And what will happen, actually, hold on one second, I forgot to put something in the back of this. Otherwise, I'm going to get paint all over the easel, which I know doesn't really matter because it's an easel. Whoa, their own stuff on the floor. Um, sure, you can, oh wait, no, you can't go there. Actually, hold on one second. I have artwork over here that I set stuff on that I don't want on. I just need to do a little rearranging. Okay. So let me put this behind that just so I can make a mess while I paint and not worry about it. Okay, back to work. So again, going over this, and it doesn't matter if you want to go lighter, darker, totally up to you. Mine is starting to dry because I walked away, so I'm just going to take my fine mist sprayer, throw some water on there. Now, I often have people ask if they can just use a regular spray bottle with water. It's not going to give you the same results. You're going to get heavy water droplets on there, and those are not fun to blend over. I'll adjust the lighting on this once we get it filled in a little bit further because that is showing really light. I just want everything to be wet so that when I blend it out, it'll be nice and smooth. But this has to stay wet, so I've got to take that fine mist sprayer and keep it misted lightly. And not heavy. I'm not trying to, oops, hit the wrong button. I'm not trying to make this like dripping wet. If it's too thin, it's not going to blend with the, the mop brush. So you don't want too much, but I also just don't want it to dry out. So I need mine to be a lot lighter than what it is because it's, let's see if I can fix this really quick. Come on. Or you can completely ignore me. That's awesome too. Can I change? Because the exposure, there we go. That was a lot closer. That looks pretty good. I'll probably have to change it. Whoa, that is weirdly good. I may have to change it as we get going because I just don't trust it to stay that, that accurate. But yeah. Okay. So pulling through some white. This again, got to keep it wet. And I'm not trying to cover all of that darker gray at this point. Now, if you look at the reference photos, we've got the actual bouquet circles, which you can do if you want to take the time to put in there. I am not just because... This is a live stream. I got to get it done quickly. I just want nice and soft and some texture back there. When I say texture, I mean visual texture, not something like if you ran your hand across it, it would be totally smooth. Okay, I'm going to take a mop brush. So this is a makeup brush. I have a link to it in the video description. I think the one in the video description has an orange handle. It's the same thing. And I'm going to lightly go over this. Now, this takes some getting used to. This, if you are new to using a mop brush and doing this wet into wet blending, we don't want a bunch of paint here, so you don't want to push hard. I am barely, see how there's a little bit on there coming off of my hand, but I am barely pushing on that brush. I want to keep a really light hand and I want this brush to stay dry. When this brush starts to pick up too much paint, it will create streaks instead of taking them away. So I often call this blending it out, but my goal is not to blend the color, it's to get rid of the brush strokes. So it's actually not really blending that I'm trying to do. The blending, any blending I would have wanted done with the air, or, um, the other brush that I applied. I'm going to take my spray bottle. I'm going to lightly go over this because it is starting to dry. Now here's the trick. If I go too much with that water right there, this is going to create tons of streaks when I go to blend it because it's too wet. You've got to practice with this because you have to, and even with me, I am very experienced doing this method, like very, like stupidly practiced in this. And I'll still screw it up sometimes. Sometimes there'll be too much water, not enough. That is normal. This I can push a little harder. The guinea pig's gonna cover that, so I'm not too worried about it. But see how now I have this nice soft background. Now, pro tip, especially if you are new to doing something like this and you have a tendency to push a little too hard and you pick up too much paint on this, Always, always, always have multiples of these dry, clean, and ready to go because I don't have time. That, if that starts to dry, I can't clean this one and dry it before the canvas dries. So this way, I can just switch over to a clean brush and look how pretty and soft that is, like just nice and out of focus. Now, yeah, it's black and white. That's boring. We're going to glaze color over that, so that's not a problem. I do want to get a really soft line, though, 
on, I'm gonna rinse this brush by just putting the tip of the bristles in the water and then drying that on the paper towel by moving it in circles on the paper towel. But while that sets, I'm going to, while it's still wet, go ahead and get this light area right along the bottom here where the guinea pig is sitting on this, looks like a white table or something. And I just, I'm doing it while it's wet because I want that edge to stay nice and soft. And that's gonna have to come way, but way up higher than that. Maybe here, and I'll have it come to about here. I don't need it perfectly straight. I just need it straight-ish. I'm gonna pull a lot more white on that now. And that's really overexposed in my photo, so it's, it's just kind of blown out with solid white. I don't need mine to be that light. I do need, though, I'm gonna lightly mist that. I'm gonna take my, my brush, mop brush, and see how I can just softly, just kind of blur, soften that edge. So now I've got this really soft edge here, which is what I'm going for. And if I wanna make that brighter white, I can later, but everything's mapped out pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush out. To, before I rinse it, I'm just gonna wipe the paint off as much as I can get off on this paper towel first. And then I will go into my little rinsing cup thing. And I just have one of these big square, it's got little container or little ridges at the bottom for water. I don't know if I put that in the video description. It should be linked on my website if not under acrylic painting supplies. So clean your brushes at this point. Don't just leave. Here's a pro huge pro tip. Do not leave your brushes sitting in the water. People think that that's going to make them last longer. Just a few seconds of sitting in the water, you've already damaged that brush. The, the bristles, the tips of them get damaged from sitting in that water when, drop my brush. But when they, they're sitting up like this, you are damaging that brush so bad. Rinse it, set it to the side. Wade, stop. Okay, so that is good. I'm gonna just, run my fingers across the edge because any paint that built up there. And now I can take the hair dryer and dry it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those now. I'll be answering them at the end of the video. Oh, and that is not plugged in. Well, it is, it's just not all the way in. Hold on one second. Nope, wrong button. Let's climb under the easel because that's always a fun time. I am way too old for that. Okay, now I'll just climb back up without bringing all the cameras down with me. That was definitely healthy for my back. It wasn't healthy at all. Okay, now I'm going to take the hair dryer to it. Now it's very important for this stage to be 100% dry before we move on, because if it's not, if it feel if it's mostly dry but not really, what'll happen when we go to glaze over? It will pull off what we just did. You'll have clumps like chunks start coming out. We need this completely dry. Okay, where you need that to cool. Now, if you feel it and it feels kind of sticky still, one, it may just need to cool all the way, but usually if it's sticky, it's not really dry all the way. But we also want it to, to be cooled down all the way. Acrylic paint dries really fast. We don't need the additional help of heat drying it faster than we want. So we're just gonna let that cool off. Okay, and I'm going to, while that cools, I think my background, I'm gonna use a combination of 
ultramarine blue, and a little bit of deep violet. Come on. Cool faster. Almost. It's still really warm though, so we've got to I guess stare at each other awkwardly while we wait for that to dry. I do want to let you guys know, I'm going to be doing a few changes to my schedule. The, the I normally update the, or upload the edited version of the live stream the next day. I'm not going to do that anymore. I think I will occasionally edit and upload those, but they just don't get enough views. Like obviously they're not taken off. Not that many people want, like I've already got the live stream. It's going to be I'm just going to do that, but I'm going to put the time more into some of the more heavily edited videos. So like tomorrow I'm going to be working on the one tuna with the cuttlefish and glitch painting. I'll be working on finally getting that. I, like I haven't even recorded the anything for it. So um, yeah, I'm excited because I'll have some more edited stuff for YouTube than what I've been having, but I'm not going to be uploading the next day anymore. Um, that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. So little, man, this is just like toasty. It does not want to cool off all the way. I'm gonna go with close enough just for time's sake, but I would let yours cool down all the way. And I'm gonna go back to the same brush. And the brush that I'm using here is a Taquan Bristled Filbert. Really, I should say, the brush that I've lost is a Taquan Bristled Filbert. Where did I put that? It was like right over here. Did it roll away? You know I've got too much crap on my easel when I can't find. The paint there it is found it this one it's the um, royal soft grip and these you can get fairly inexpensive sometimes on amazon or i don't know if i've seen them that inexpensive on blick but occasionally i get good deals on amazon so what i'm going to do over here to the palette i'm going to thin this with a lot of water now i do not want to mix any of the gray i don't want any white mixed in with this because that will make it opaque yeah it'll make it more more a lighter color so if you want it lighter just add more water but i'm going to thin that down quite a bit and now i'm going to apply that right over actually i'm going to take some my fine mist sprayer so that this goes smoothly and what i'm doing is tinting the color i'm going to use this i'm going to pull a bit of deep violet do the same thing i'm going to thin it with a decent amount of water there we go get that really pretty purple in there And now I get this really, look how pretty this transitions from the purples and the blues. Mine's more of a violet than what you're seeing on camera because for whatever reason, it doesn't love getting violets in there, right? But whatever. Now see how it's kind of goopy and kind of running? That will be fixed as soon as I go over it with a mop brush. It'll actually lift a bunch of this up. I don't have to worry about my brush strokes yet because this will remove them. Now I'm pushing harder. I'm not using that light hand I used for the normal wet into wet because now I'm just softening that out and I'm actually intentionally lifting quite a bit. Now I've got a blotchy mark in here where it didn't really get in all the way. If, I, if that was not going to be covered by the guinea pig, I would take my fine mist sprayer, wet it, and then I could blend that out all the way. But again, guinea pig's going to cover it so I don't have to worry about it. And that gives me this really pretty tinted color. Let me show you on this camera. See how like nice that is? Now again, this is blotchy, so if my guinea pig wasn't gonna cover that, I would want to repaint that area. But we don't need to worry about that because he will. Scooch back over. This camera is a little, hold on, I need to fix this for you. Kinda better. There we go. And then I'm going to give it, let's see, I'm gonna take a little bit more white here and I can leave, I'm not even gonna clean the brush. The little bit of violet and blue that's on, totally fine. So I'm kind of dry brushing, but I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm gonna take my fine mist sprayer, get that wet. And then I'm just going to use this to smooth that out. Done. Okay, now I need to clean these brushes off before this dries. So what I'm going to do, that, well, that one, I don't really have anything to wipe off. There wasn't that much paint on the brush, so I don't have to wipe it on the paper towel first. But with this guy, all I'm doing is adding the tip of the bristles into the water and then taking my paper towel and just going in circles until it's dried off. 
So that very quickly gave us a really nice, look how soft and out of focus that background is. So now when we put all the details with the guinea pig fur, it's gonna stand out so pretty. Let's try this. Okay, and let's go ahead and tape the line drawing to the canvas. And I've got my piece of transfer paper. We're just gonna slide, oh, that's not dry all the way, it's sticking to it. That is definitely not dry all the way. You know what, we're gonna, all, I'm gonna pull this off because if that paint in too many areas is not dry all the way, I don't wanna, we're gonna let that set for a minute. While we wait, do we have, yes, this is another uh, Frederick's canvas board. Yeah, it's, I can feel it's a little bit sticky. And so yeah, that, I'm gonna take the hairdryer to it a little bit longer. Now my hair dryer luckily is fairly weak. I love that hair dryer. It was a super cheap one. I think I found it like Ross or something like that. It, for those of you in the US, or it's a, a discount type store in the US. And um, it doesn't get that hot. If your hair dryer gets really, really hot, you need to remember that your acrylic paints are a plastic. And so if you overheat it, it could start to bubble up. Mine does not get that hot. I don't need to worry about it. But if, it, if you have a hair dryer that gets really, really hot, keep it at a farther distance. Okay, let's try that again. Take two. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a little stylus and loosely go around there. You only have a few areas, like on his ear and eye, that are very precise. Most of it is just floof. Actually, you know what? No, I'll do it in sections. We could, so many different ways to get to the same end. So I'm always changing my mind on which way do I think would be easier or faster. The big thing to watch is where are the clumps and clusters of fur and where do they change direction? Because they change direction a lot. And that's gonna help you to have a more realistic, more 3D looking guinea pig. If you do all the fur go in the same direction, you have a weird looking flat cartoon. most of this in now. I'm thinking good enough. Now I recommend keep you don't immediately throw away your tracing paper when you've done something like this because if you get to painting and you're like oh I feel like I lost the direction of the fur or where did the eye go I lost the eye throw your tracing paper back over and check your work again like double check that it's it's in there accurately. Now, as usual, you can bid on this if my website works, which is always iffy. Over, um, the link is in the video description. 
but there has been a problem with the auction not working for people. So what you should be able to do if you don't get the error code is log in and then leave the auction page and then go back to it once you're already logged in. That works for most people, but yeah, that's been a, it's been a, a fun time. Okay. Now I am not going to worry about any of the color on this guy. I am only going to worry about black and white. I, everything I do right now with the fur is black and white. And then what I'm going to do the same thing I did over this background is glazing the tone, the color over it. So I've got my rake brushes. I've got a few of them over here. Oh, that one is eh, maybe for the outer edges. I'm just digging those out. I should have made sure they were all ready before I started, but you know, why would I want to be prepared? These should all work. And I've got a liner brush. So I'm going to sketch in his eye first. I'm using black paint. I'm thinning that with water. Always thinning my paint with water. And let's just go ahead and start on that eye. I'm not gonna worry about the shine or the gloss or anything like that. I'm just gonna paint that in. This is a number two synthetic hog hair liner brush. So it's, oh, I don't need this anymore. It's one of the generic ones from Hobby Lobby. It's pretty much, paint brushes are the only generic art supply that I like. And as much as I dislike Hobby Lobby's um, business model with the getting rid of all the art supplies, um, all the name brand art supplies so they can sell their generic crap because I hate their generic crap. I do love their generic paintbrushes. Okay, this area around the eye is a lot lighter, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix some white in with that. I'm not gonna worry about the, um, more white. I'm not gonna worry about the shine on the eye just yet. I'll let that dry a bit. Actually, while it's wet, I could do a little bit so that it um, I can let it blend in. I just have to take a separate brush, a clean brush, and just smudge it a bit. Okay, and I'm gonna go to a larger brush. I'm gonna block in the ears. Same thing, just doing that in black and white. So it's a little bit darker here and on the inside. I'm gonna get a little bit darker inside. I'm gonna take that same brush. And actually the brush that I used to smudge just a moment, where did it go? I would actually like to use it again. It's great because it's already damaged. So, yep. So it's kind of perfect for using it as a smudge brush because it's already frayed out a bit. Get some highlights. So we've got a highlight on the inner portion of the ear there and a little bit on that outer rim. So again, all I'm really worried about are my lights and darks. Don't worry about the colors just yet. We're gonna glaze all that over it later. But we're simplifying it by only focusing on the values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. I've got a lighter area right around the edge of that ear here. Be better if I did this with a liner brush, but whatever. I'm lazy. I like making more work for myself. I'm lazy, but I'm actually making more work for myself. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'm gonna let that set and let's get some darker gray over here. And then a little bit of the light. And we're gonna smudge that one. You just kind of see the hint of it off to the side. So we're not gonna do a bunch of work there. And then we've got some light areas around the nose. Let's just block that in. So I don't lose where that goes. Okay, now I'm going to paint in the fur. I'm not going to focus on the highlights here. I'm gonna let the background kind of show through on a lot of this. Mainly, I'm going to go through with dark right now, with just black. Let's block those, and I'm going to use a larger one. So this one is a 3 8 inch. It is a Princeton Velvet Touch Filbert Gra Grainer, that it's called. It's a rake brush. So what it is, is it, the brush is like a normal filbert would be like this, a rake brush. The bristles are just spread out so that it, um, one brush stroke looks like a whole bunch of little brush strokes. 
if I turn it to the side or if I push harder, it just works like your normal rake brush. But see how, or I mean paintbrush, see how I'm getting a whole bunch of little brush strokes? That is what I'm looking for. Now we do, I lied, I said I wasn't going to worry about it yet, but I'm going to because it's actually kind of a um, easy thing to do while that paint is all still wet. I'm going to add the highlights because this area being out of focus, I want that to blend a bit. So those highlights are going to go just on his rear. And then I'm going to take the black and let that kind of bleed together a little bit. Now this is going to be more harsh than the end result will be because when I go through and start glazing color over it later, that's going to tone a lot of this down. It'll bring like the lights a little bit darker, the darks a little bit lighter. Okay, now on to the next little clump. So we've got a really dark area around the edge. I think I'll just work. I'm going to keep a light brush and a dark brush um, as I move through this. See how that end is nice and floofy? And these brush strokes are slightly curved. We don't want them perfectly straight. That'll look too stiff. So I'm gonna curve the little floof from his body where it hits the table. We'll just curl that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the gray and let that blend just a bit so that it's not too rough. And I'm going to use that same brush with more white. I'm going to thin that with water. Now your rake brushes work better if they're thinned down with a bit of water. If that paint is on there too thick, they just work like a normal filbert. Or if you push too hard, it's like a normal filbert. You're not getting all these little brush strokes that I want. Now, what if you don't have a rake brush? You can still paint this. I would use your normal filbert brush and then come back through with a liner brush to define some of the individual, or a round brush and define some of the individual lines. So you don't have to use a rake brush. It just saves a lot of time. Because look, one brush stroke and I have a whole bunch of little bits of fur. I am a fan of saving time, especially on a live stream. Now the trick with the rake brush is to make sure it doesn't come out too uniform because that certainly does happen and can give you a very unnatural look. You, I mean, you do one or two brush strokes and it all look, they all look the same. So you're constantly kind of turning and twisting so that you get some of that variation in there. Sorry, itchy eye, I can't stand it anymore. Wade's over thinking, you don't let me scratch. Poor itchy cow. It's a little bit darker as we go in here, so I'm going to throw a little bit of the dark, but then I'm going to come back through with the white. I'm going to get a little bit more water on there, and I'm going to bring these two together. So I want the hint of the fur, but not quite that harsh. Remember, this will be toned down a lot when we come through and start adding color. Here we've got the fur switching a couple of different directions. So it's coming in this way and then going out. Got a few little wisps in here. Some of that's definitely going to be easier to do with a liner brush than with a rake brush. Now your rake brushes, as they get, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit frayed. That's a really good thing. We want that. When they get more used, they get even better. When they're brand new, they're a lot more difficult to use. So I don't, I rarely clean mine with a, um, with my brush cleaner because I actually want them to be pretty firm. Let's see, we've got the fur going that direction and then we come back. We're going all kinds of directions in here. He's a cute fluffy mess. Make sure you get that, that just constant switch of fur direction. He would look so weird. Like cats, their fur go, you know, when they're fluffy like this, it kind of goes all the same direction. These guys, the fur is more coarse and it is just like bedhead, really bedhead. So we want to capture that bedhead. Oop, that's getting too dry. So let's get some water and some paint, reload that brush. And let's come back through here. 
again, switching direction. See, like constantly is, now when I say constantly switching direction, I don't mean put a bunch of random X's all over the place. I've seen people do that. That's not gonna look good either. This is controlled chaos. a little bit too much water it's a little too thin there let's soften that edge let's get a darker bit in here now I'm gonna soften this too I'm gonna take that gray and just kind of soften right along the bottom so it's not so harsh. I'm just gonna go right back and forth and let that sort of blend into the background or the, the where he's sitting. Okay, next area. So we've got under his chin. Let's get that area is pretty dark. Define that. And then we've got another clump that comes out here. So it starts by looking like a hot mess and then we just keep layering. So I'm gonna get some more with the white. The white is really more gray at this point because it keeps mixing in on the brush, which is perfectly fine. This looks a little bit softer in here. Look at your photo. Doesn't need to be exact, but do go for close. Where are your, your general shapes of lights and darks in there? What direction is that fur moving? Need a little bit more water on there. That paint is too thick, so I'm not getting as much of the little bristly hairs as I would like. There we go. Starting to dry a bit. So I'm mapping out where that darker area is in here. It can be softer because it starts to get a little bit more out of focus as we move our way out. So I'm pushing a little bit harder so it's not as wiry looking. So I'm gonna pull some more of the darks in here now so we get some variation. And see, because I'm not worried about trying to get the perfect color right now, I simplify this entire process. This would take so long if you're trying to worry about mixing perfect color and get the right type of brush strokes. Make it easier on yourself. And I'm not pushing very hard. If you push very hard, you just turned it into a normal filbert. You don't get those little, uh, little hairs, the little, little individual lines. This is a little bit more solid dark in here. It's kind of messy. thing in here it's a bit more solid so I'm pushing a bit harder and that just makes it work more like a normal filbert need a 
reload that brush a bit. I've definitely got some more dark areas I need to work on now that I've got more of the darks and I can see the inside of the ear definitely needs to get some dark bits in. You can see I'm also leaving a lot of that blue and purple from the background showing through. There's just one less area I need to put color on later. Load the white brush now. I need to soften a bunch of this out. I'm just dabbing my finger in it where it was a bit too defined, too harsh. So I want to soften it a bit. kind of overlaps it comes up into this sort of triangle up here and I can turn the brush to the side and now it works more like a liner brush see how I'm getting these thin individual lines where I want to be a bit more controlled and switching directions again But notice, I think one of the things that you really want to see on this is that I did not just start randomly working all over the place, putting lines everywhere. You're going to end up with a hot confetti mess. It's not going to look like fur. I picked one little zone, worked on that, then moved to the next little zone, work on that. You've got these clumps and clusters that you're trying to build. It's not just put more lines. And a lot of people think, well, if I just put more detail, if I just keep adding lines, it'll start to look realistic. No, if you're not paying attention to those clumps and clumps, clusters, you're just going to keep making it worse. Break it up into one little area. Now that I've got everything blocked in, now I'm starting to jump around and, and just looking at my photo and deciding what I need to change and what needs adjustments. But when I started, I was really focusing on one little area at a time. When you look at the picture as a whole, it gets, starts getting very overwhelming and it doesn't look like what you're trying to do. Break it up into one little abstract shape. I'm not looking at it as like, oh, I'm painting a guinea pig cheek. It's not going to come out looking right. I'm looking at my photo and going, okay, it's dark in this spot and I've got this weird shape and it's thicker and then it gets thinner. Those are the things that I'm really looking at. I'm going to get some more defined little guys in here. Okay, I'm going to rinse this off. I'm going to switch to a round brush. And I'll also do a few little wisps later on with the liner brush just to define things a bit better. Actually, I also want to put a little bit more of a shadow underneath him. So let me grab, I'm just going to use a normal um, filbert, tack lumber sold filbert here. I'm just going to make a little smudge. darker right under him so it just kind of fades out and then I'll take a clean brush and just smudge those edges that way it's not such a harsh transition tra harsh transition into that white okay there's this little shadow. We need that to dry for a moment, which is perfect because a fly me the, to the moon said, feed those poor skinny dogs. Gibson's head popped up, he knows. 
What? Did, look at, you can see his ribs. Look at, are you trying to pretend that I don't feed you? Okay, I guess we're coming over now. I didn't say the word. You want a super chat? Okay, fine. Thank you so much, Lightning to the Moon. Okay, this is the last of the super chat treats. I did bring in, oh, wait, you didn't take it. That was a good boy. Um, I did bring in their Cheez Its, though. Yeah, that was good. Okay, go lay down. Thank you so much. Go lay down, poor skinny dogs. Down, down, down. Gibson, wait, down. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell in your ears, but apparently firm voice is the only way that's going to work, sort of. Sighthounds are the sweetest dogs in the world. They are also the most stubborn dogs in the world. If you don't use mean mom voice, they're like, you're not serious. We're not going to do what you say. Okay. Next, I wanted to do a little bit more with a shading in the ear. Let me grab a clean brush. Just so I can get a definite shape in there. Just gonna smudge. Now, one of the cool things, you guys have may, if you've been around very long, you've heard me complain about how much I dislike the look of dry brushing with acrylics. This canvas is so smooth, you dry brush away. And it is not gonna give you that tacky dry brush look that acrylics are, are prone to. Somebody's gonna get leave me mean comments. It's not tacky. Okay, I'm sure yours looks amazing. You're probably the only person who dry brushes in acrylics and it looks good. I believe you. That's mean. It's true. But it's both mean and true. get a little bit of a highlight in here, a little inside of his eye. And I'm going to switch to my liner brush for the detailing right in here. A little bit of a shadow there. See, I want to do a few more little wispy guys. There is like a hair or a string or something. I swear every time I move, I can feel it, but I can't find it. Like, I don't see it. No one cares. Move on. Oops, that was going to be too much paint on the end of that brush. There we go. Get a few little guys defined here around his eye. See, just adding in these few little guys. So you don't want to depend 100% on the rake brush. You can define things a bit better. Get a little guinea pig chin there. Okay, I'm going to dry this and we can start glazing the color over him. Now, I'm going a bit saturated on him. We're going to be using some red oxide for the warmer areas in here and then some blues and purples as we move out. I still feel it. This is weird. It, you know what? I bet something stuck to my shirt. And so when I move my arm down, like I probably shed on it. Okay. That's gross. Now I'm holding off on the whiskers until we glaze the fur because I don't want to get that all in there. Okay, let's go. Now we are going to start with, I think I'm going to start with the reddish tone. So we've got my red oxide over here. I'm going to pull a bit of that. And I'm going to thin that with a decent amount of paint and, or water and a little bit of black because we don't want it to glow. Like he's a little gingery, but not that gingery. And I'm just lightly going over that. That is thinned with a good amount of water so that the light, the white is, it's um, showing through. But see what I meant by it'll tone down because the 
the white won't be as harsh because obviously we're darkening it by putting the color over it. And I, I don't have to really stay inside the lines. You can go over the black, you can go over the light, doesn't matter. That's actually a really good color. We're just gonna lift more of that. But if you did not dry all the way, your previous layer, you would just be lifting and ruining everything. I mean, you can fix it. It's not permanently ruined, but you have to repaint it. And no one wants to do that. I'm going to pull a little bit of this out here, even though most of that's going to be more of your blues. Now, what if you want something a bit brighter? Come back with your whites and then glaze over it again. You can go back and forth on that. Like there, I would actually like more red. right around the eye. Soften that up. Actually, I'll just let that fade a little bit into the black. Now I'm using more of the red oxide. Now the red oxide, you can use burnt sienna too. I just like red oxide better, but red oxide is also a little bit more opaque. So it really shows up where I want it to. See, like, look at how like, it's pretty bold. When you mix it with black, you can get more of a chocolate brown, which is what I started with. But now I'm gonna get, hit a few areas that are a little bit more red. It's a little too opaque, let's dab that. Oh my gosh, I'm really happy with how he's come out. I was a little bit worried because that much fur I knew would take quite a while, but yeah, he is just adorable. Let's get some blues in there now. So I've got that ultramarine blue again, same blue I used in my background. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my um, red oxide in there that's too, I mean, I want blue, but that's blue. The red oxide will neutralize that a bit much better. Oops. I already have a decent amount of blue just from the background showing through, so it's not like I needed that much more. I do want more blue over the eye though. few spots that are more saturated. Okay, and now I'm gonna clean a few areas up, add some whiskers, few more highlights, and we are done. So I'm gonna take definite white highlight right over the shiniest part of the eye there. Get a little bit more down here. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. I am not pushing very hard. That's how I'm getting these super thin lines. A lot of people think you need these teeny tiny little bristles. No, I just need a, you want the longer bristle brush, but you want to thin that paint with a decent amount, decent amount of water and do not push hard. See, the harder you push, the thicker your line will be. And I'll need to come through with some black lines in there as well. You need to thin that down, get a bit more water on there. Now, too much water, and that's gonna be a hot mess too, so I'll usually dab it a little bit on a paper towel to make sure it's not too much. 
like right there that does have too much water so too translucent there we go Do the same thing before, as I was doing before. Let's get those few of these little individual hairs in. See, I'm mainly focusing on the ends of the fur there, just getting some of these little highlights. I've got to do the same thing up here. I need to come through with some darker little individual hairs. ones are all pretty soft we don't want to do a bunch out there okay and let's get some dark ones you won't see them as much on this side want to darken a little bit change the shape in here a little bit more okay do I want anything a little bit lighter Maybe a few more spots of highlights. If we finish this guy quickly enough, I can spend a little bit more time fussing over some highlights and shadows, just like little details here and there. I am really happy with how he came out. He is actually really accurate to what he looks like on camera too, which is quite unusual. Just throwing things on the floor. Okay, let's get a few more highlights in there. I'm not necessarily having to go exactly by the reference photo at this point. I'm just looking at what I think would make mine look better. more little curls in there. We need to make sure he's got his bed head going. And is he really a guinea pig without bed head? A few more highlights right in here. As I kind of back away from it, I can see I want that to stand out a bit more.
Okay, I'm calling him done. I like, actually, wait, no. I load. I'm going to highlight right in there. Now I'm calling him done. That guy came out so cute. I need to sign him. Now remember, remember when you sign, if this gets framed, this could be hung either just setting it on a shelf or it could be put in a frame. If it puts, gets put in a frame, you're, the frame is just right along the edge gonna cover that. So don't go all the way to the bottom when you sign your work. Um, let's grab that. I'm gonna sign right over here. way too much water on this so I'm gonna leave it flat to dry actually let's just not be silly and take the hairdryer to it so it doesn't run and here we go there is the finished guinea pig painting. Not bad for an hour's worth of work. I am really happy with how he came out. There we go. Yay, I love this guy. He is so, oh, it makes me want a guinea pig. No, I don't need any more animals. Enough animals. Okay, I will go ahead and answer your questions. Again, if you wanna bid on him, if you are in the US, the link is in the video description. If it doesn't bid and nobody wins, last week the snowy owl did get sold. I just sold it for the base $65 because the person who was trying to bid couldn't, like my website just sucks for this. But um, yeah, he needs a hedgehog buddy next time. So um, yeah, if um, the starting bid is $75 on that, if it doesn't sell, just contact me after and you can have it for the 75, whoever the first person to contact me is anyway. But ideally, just see if you can get it to bid. Um, that's, that, that's a thing. Anyway, okay, so questions. Um, oops, Discord. The Python said, would you say that Liquitex soft body, the same consistency as golden fluid, I think, are thinner or thicker than the Liquitex basics? They are thicker. Liquitex soft body is a lot, it's a heavier pigmented. It is definitely thicker. Unless your Liquitex basics has started to dry out a little bit, that might be thicker. But no, the soft body is a much uh, more dense paint. Like it's not thick like the heavy body. That is the stuff you would use if you wanted to paint with like a palette knife. But it is definitely a, I should do a comparison video. Hold on. Let, let me write that note down because that is a really good idea for a video. Um, oh, I need to paint that. I forgot about you. Um, hmm. An artist with notes. You know what? I'm just going to write it on my... Hold on. I have a pen for notes. Why don't I just write it on that? Okay. Um, are you not going to write? Yeah. Okay, that would make for a really good uh, video comparison. Okay. Next, whoops. Um, Jason said, when you do the black and white background with the guinea pig, does the going over it with the other colors, does it make it opaque? What? As usual, Jason, you are not speaking the same language as me. Um, the black and white is opaque. The colors that I use on top are not as opaque. They're thinned way down with water, so that's going to make them more translucent. Red oxide is a fairly opaque color, but even that I thinned down with enough water that it's not that. But I, I'm not sure what going over the other colors make it opaque. Yeah, I don't know it. That is not coming out right. Python said, do they have polychromos in Michael's uh, stores in the US? A couple of years ago, Michael's in Canada had polychromos. Now they don't now. Um, last I checked, they didn't. You might be able to get small packs of it, but not individual. Uh, who used to have it was a, no, it wasn't Blick. I think we had Azel Art Supply locally. They used to, they don't anymore. Not Blick, I've never been into a Blick. Um, I was thinking Aaron Brothers, but I don't even think Aaron Brothers did. They just had uh, Prismacolors was their only like name brand. 
they're gone now. Um, Melissa said, will you have prints available of this? I'll probably make postcards for Patreon. That He definitely is postcard worthy. This one came out really good. So probably that, but... Um, Oh, he's just so cute. Um, but yeah, that's, I definitely need to do that. Um, okay, so it's nine o'clock and I have gone through the questions. So either, I don't know, do we wrap it up early or like, <laughs> stare at each other awkwardly for however long? Um, let's see. I don't, do you guys want a demonstration of something? I don't know. Um, I thought this was going to take me at least an hour and a half. I did not expect to get through this so fast. So I didn't prepare anything because I didn't, wasn't ready. Yeah. Art of Raven D said, whatever you'd like to do. I don't know. Cause I wasn't planning on it. So my brain is like, I'm sure I'm trying to think of what, I guess we could do the Liquitex heavy body, soft body demonstration. Now let's do a quick, quick run through of that. So I've got them all in here. Let's compare. Let's see if I've got some that are a similar color. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to try to find the same colors. That would not even be fun. I liked the idea until I realized there is no way I'm going to find the same colors in all of this. And then where do I have my soft body? Hold on. This might take me a minute. It's over here. I just don't know where over here. Okay, that'll work. What color are you? Burnt umber? Sure. This is not the greatest example because they are not the same color. But let me see if I can find a palette knife because that would be an easy way to display some of this. Or maybe I won't because I don't know where one is. Um, what do I want to paint on? Oh no, that's Legion. I don't want to mess their paper up. I think I'll just use... Sure, let's do this. So we're going to start with heavy body and work our way down to basic. So heavy body, let's write that down actually. So one of the big things with, uh, no, with the Liquitex um, Basics is that Basics dries fairly flat, whereas Heavy Body and Soft Body, those paints dry very, very glossy. Those are the, that's the first reason I don't like the those two paints because I can't, my white charcoal pencil doesn't show up well on top of it. And it won't look the same because I'm working on ungessoed paper because I don't have a canvas. Do I have, I don't know where my canvases are, my little canvas boards are. Um, but the, the basics dries more matte. It has a little bit of gloss to it, but not a lot. Now, once it's dry, because some people are like, well, I like gloss, right there with you. Add a gloss varnish over it and it looks the same in the end. So the end product looks exactly the same. The Liquitex Heavy Body and Soft Body both dry faster than Liquitex Basics. So it's a little bit more challenging to use I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Um, I have a ton of heavy body and soft body. I almost never use them. So it's not an issue of me being cheap. It's an issue of they just don't work as well for my techniques as the Liquitex Basics. So, and you guys know, I am a label art supply hoarder of the night. So I don't, um, I'm willing to spend the money on the good stuff. It's just that Liquitex Basics work better for my, my techniques. So the heavy body, when we put this out, we'll start with the palette. I don't know if you'll actually be able to see. So it doesn't look that thick, but it is thicker. Um, and I don't know if this is actually gonna demonstrate well. We'll find out. Um, so this I can paint. Let's see, let's see how it get, grabs. Can you see how it's like chunky? I can paint thick and chunky on there. Whereas, let's rinse that. Liquitex Basics, see, it doesn't, it's not staying that way. And okay, that does kind of look chunky, not the same. This is not the best example, but it's a thinner paint. It doesn't leave the same 
chunkiness, I guess. Like if I wanted to paint with a palette knife, it wouldn't, my choice would not be basics. But let's see, I don't even know if this demonstration is gonna work because I'm on paper. This may be a total waste. But that it's thicker, very, very pigmented. Um, and this is a fairly translucent color, but I can build this up pretty thick. Now, you can use a, like a modeling paste, a um, texture, God, what are they called? I have some here somewhere, but it adds a bunch of texture to it so you can make it thick and chunky. Whereas the basics, let's use this one. It's gonna be a little bit thinner. See, I'm not building it as chunky. It's not get, going to be as, you can't really see on here. Not with this camera. It's not as thick, it's not as chunky. Um, and like I said, it'll dry faster or dry um, uh, flat. And then the last one, this is my favorite. We've got the soft body. The soft body are what I use if I do Liquitex or um, acrylic pores. So this is much softer. This is, it looks on the palette and it feels very, very much like um, like the Liquitex Basics, but it's not, like you see how it's not picking up chunks, it's not as thick. It is more opaque though, um, or more pigmented, I, I should say. So it's not, like that is thinned down a decent amount and it, it is just, it's a very pigmented color, but I'm not building it up the same way that I would with the heavy body. So for me, I don't think this was a great example, but let's just go ahead and I'll explain it a little bit better. So heavy body, if I'm painting something and I want to use a palette knife, I want thicker, chunky, or if I want thick brush strokes, maybe it's not even that I need it thick, but I want those brush strokes showing. So there is a little bit of texture there and like doing more impressionism, heavy body is going to be my first choice. If I'm doing a Liquitex or uh, an acrylic pour where if you're, I don't know how to explain an acrylic pour. It's kind of an abstracty thing. I don't for background sometimes. I haven't done one in a while. I need to, but I'm going to use my Liquitex, my, my, uh, soft body, heavy body, too thick. I'm not going to be able to thin it down with my pouring medium enough. The Liquitex basics are not pigmented enough. They don't work well at all. It takes so much Liquitex basics to get anywhere near the amount of pigment that the soft body has. So you would think, well, you should use soft body all the time. I don't want that much pigment in my normal work. When I'm working in realism, as we saw with the guinea pig, there's a lot, I work in translucent layers. I build up and that's part of what gives me the depth and the style that I work in. I don't want a super opaque acrylic paint. It's just not what I'm looking for, for the style that I paint in. But a, a pour, look what, like that, I need the most pigmented paint I can find for a pour because you're thinning it with your, your mixing medium or your pour medium, whatever. Um, basics don't work for that. Now the drawback for me, the main thing besides being the opacity being so much so high with the soft body, the main reason that I don't like soft body, they dry stupidly fast compared to Liquitex Basics. Same with the heavy body. It's annoying how fast they dry. So it is very hard to get the soft blending to get the looks that I like with the soft body versus the heavy or versus the Liquitex Basics. So that alone, the dry time and how translucent the basics, the way that I, I layer and build up that depth, basics are, that's why I like them the best. But again, it's, it's the technique and the style that I'm painting. It's not like I'm saying Liquitex Basics are the best paint in the world. It depends on the style you're going for all of all of Liquitex products I love like I trust anything that they're making um, versus like Hobby Lobby has been in it for five minutes and making art supply and they're just getting cheap crap out of China like where they're sourcing their materials from is and now that's not to say I don't know where Liquitex makes theirs uh France Okay, well, I do now, um, not China. So, but even, it's not that you can't get good stuff that was made in China. It's that a lot of these brands that are making their generic, they all go to the same company, it's some crap, like make it as, as cheap as possible because then they can sell it for as cheap as possible. Okay, great, but when you're a professional and you need to, your work to last, I'm not risking my stuff you know, putting weeks or months of time into a painting that I'm gonna sell. If I sell something for $1,200, that better last that person's lifetime. They are going to be pissed at me if that starts to flake off, if it starts to chip, if it starts to do anything it's not supposed to do, that looks really bad on me. Like, I don't know if you're gonna get into some lawsuits there, but let's just not, I'm not risking that on a generic, a crap made in China 
art supply, which is half of what you see these days, like on all, all of these smaller brands, anything generic, and most of the stuff, if it's not a name brand, you've got a lot of these off brands, they constantly change their names on Amazon. Those like, no, generic uh, paintbrushes, love them. Art, other art supplies, not so much. No canvas, no paper, no pencils, no paint. I do not want generic in those. Okay. Um, oops. Fly me to the moon said, talk about what's on your Patreon. Um, is that what's? on your Patreon. Um, yeah, I did read that right. Okay, so Patreon. Wow, that's a good question. Thank you for the little, give me an opportunity to plug myself here. Actually, why don't I just show you what's on? I can do a screen share. That's a really good idea. I love you for that. Okay, let's pull up a media source and hold on. I need a new window. We're gonna go with, um, So I've got two. I need to update my video library on my website. I should do that pretty soon. So let's go, am I logged in? Yeah, I'm logged in. Um, now I do need to share a screen. Give me one second to figure this out. Share, window capture. Oh, it works, yay. Okay, so there is my Patreon. So what do I have on Patreon? I've got a couple, we can go over to my video library first. Uh, video, Patreon videos, so lawcree.com, Patreon videos. I've got it separated by, to make it easier for you to find what you're looking for by medium. And for $6 a month, ooh, I need to change this. Look, it's the old one. It says as little as four a month. It is not that. Um, I want to see how easy it is to edit my website, by the way. Let's just enable that. I've not done it on this computer. Don't screw up, okay? Please don't screw up. Oh, it is making my computer think. Six dollars. You're not letting me change this. Maybe this isn't a good idea. I think I'm asking too much of my computer right now. Why, I don't know. should just, well, normally I would just click and then it would pop up and I change the thing and it just is being weird about that. Um, there we go. This is what I should be able to do. So I'm going to have to change this on everything. Remember how I was like, hey, rem know how easy it is to change my stuff on my website? Yeah, it's not being easy right now. Four, whoops, not 44, six and 11. And six, not 46, oh my God. Well, so much for me making it sound like everything was so easy and worked so nicely. Whatever, I fixed it. Um, let me just save that. But I use, uh, what is it? Um, elegant themes. So saved and let's exit. Anyway, that was, not the best example of how fast it is because that was going really slow on my website. But anyway, um, for what this is, is you can click on any of those and it will take you to the actual post over on Patreon and then you can watch the video. Um, it gives you access to the whole thing. And actually now I've been doing downloadable steps. So if you wanted to see like this is at step one, my artwork should look like this before I move on to step two. So not all of them have that, but I've been doing that a lot more when I think it's helpful for a lesson. But yeah, you have um, the library will take you through so you can scroll through like by medium. So, you know, you want to work in colored pencil, pick a project and it'll take you over to Patreon to the actual longer lesson so that you can follow along. But when you sign up, I need to update all of this on my website. There are now over 400 lessons available. As soon as you sign up, you get tons in all of these different mediums. 
Oh, I have to change there now too. Um, but you've got acrylics, oil painting, charcoal, graphite, digital painting. There not, isn't as much there. I'm working on that. I've got some plans now that I'm doing stuff on the tablet because the, the one of the things on the, so with digital painting, why I didn't have a lot of lessons is mostly I work on the Wacom tablet. Most people don't have a Wacom tablet. However, if I do things on my Samsung tablet, you just download a $5 app and on most tablets like Apple, Samsung, whatever has a, a little S pen, you can draw digitally now. And so I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing some more. I'm working on the Flamingo one right now for you guys. But yeah, we'll have some more of those. But yeah, we've got this broken down by mediums. There are over 400 lessons now. So many lessons. And they're, they average anywhere between one to three, sometimes longer hours um, per lesson. So it, it's slow enough that you can really follow along, pause, catch up where you need to. But lots of projects. Lots of things for you to follow. And then depending on which tier you go with, I can actually show you on here. If we go back to, let's see, Patreon. So the tiers, did I update this? I might not, oh, I did update it, good. So the $6 a month, you get five high resolution wildlife photos every single month, those are, or flowers. Those are taken by me that you can use in your own work. Um, the step-by-step -step downloadable photos and then the to go with the art and then a new lesson every week. There's instant access to over 400 lessons. So even at $6, you still get those. I've got to update that because it used to only be 300. There's way more now. This is an example of the steps, what that looks like so you can follow along easier. For $11 or more a month, you get all of the previous tier plus an extra five photos and a postcard sent to you every month. The post office may or may not get that to you in one piece. $16 a month, you also get coloring pages. And I actually have one right here. I printed, I'm going to show you, um, do a demonstration. I'll give this one to everyone on Patreon so um, you can test it and see if you like. But it's got the cuttlefish and the... Um, damsels in there this is from the one big painting but the cool thing with this is that you can print it i printed it on watercolor paper and now i'm going to paint ink tents over it so the coloring pages aren't just like take some crayons you can print this and do like use it to practice with watercolor with ink tents so that's a really fun thing that you can do with those um so you get your coloring pages you get what was beeping something was some alarm was just going off in, in the other room um, let's see, you get the postcard with that and you have permission to use any of my animal photos on, that I post on social media. So MeWe, Facebook, Instagram, if I post something of one of my animals, you can use that in your own work as well. Um, for the, tw the top tier is the teal membership for 22 a month. You get all of the, the videos, all the previous things. You still get your 10 high resolution photos. You also, oh, and for the $11 or higher, you get the monthly art challenge. Oh, it's about time for me to post a new one too. But we get a group art challenge. We get, you get your postcard, but you also get a, gr a mini print. I think I have them in there as greeting cards. They used to be greeting cards and I changed them to mini prints. Um, made more sense. You get a sticker with something art related on it. It, like this one here the layer till it looks good that's an example of one of the stickers and you get your coloring page okay what else is in there i went out of order and i don't remember um yeah so you get all of that stuff for the top tier and then what was the thing i missed the art challenge and oh the new thing that we are doing and this is for all tiers of patreon is each month right now everyone seems to be really enjoying it so as long as people are using it i'll keep doing it but i've got monthly prompts for you so i know a lot of people really enjoy doing like inktober or drawtober or drawvember i don't know what you guys are calling them crazy kids but i've been doing the prompts so you've got a prompt for every day of the week to do a quick sketch like just take 10 minutes a day do a quick sketch like one of them was a snail and you guys got creative on these which was so fun to see we um people were posting updates of their sketchbooks each day on, di on discord it's still going on so you can join in on that right now and then a new one every month i'll release the next set of prompts for you to get creative and draw from so that's tons of fun um, if you want to be involved in that. And then the other thing is, and I will be posting, it'll start with the top tier and I'll work my way down depending on how many entries I have. I occasionally do art critiques. So that one we'll be doing next Wednesday night. That's what the live stream is going to be. So that should help anyone with your art because a lot of times we're all making the same mistakes. So when I'm critiquing somebody else's work, try to think of how you could apply that to your own um, to improve on. So that is next week. And that is something that I take those critique submissions from Patreon. So I'll, I'll start by opening opening it up to anybody in the $22 tier, depending on how many submit, then I'll open it up to the $16 and then down to the 11 
Um, I don't use, I don't know that I'll make it down to the $4 tier. We'll see, because I can only fit about, I think 15-ish critiques I can get through in a two hour period, 10 to 15. So we'll see how many, many submit. That's another reward over there on Patreon. Oh, I missed a super chat from Nestor Nunez. I'm sorry, um, wait, where was, is it still up there? Oh, yeah, Nestor, thank you so, oh, hold on. Gibson knows, you want a super chat? Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I missed that. Okay, say thank you, Nestor. These treats smell just like Cheez-Its. It's the weirdest thing. There you go. Th thank you very much. Thanks for letting me know, Nick. Go lay down. 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 You too. Go on. Go lay down. Down. Gibson, down. Gibson, don't play like you don't know the rules. He's like, no, but I know that I can just take my time. Um, he moans as he lays down. So funny. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where was I? I'm a little bit behind here on the questions. Violet Sky said, advice on painting glowing Christmas lights. Yes, high contrast. You got to get those bright brights up against the dark darks, and that's what gives you that look of the glow. And then a little, you know, softness around the bulb, but absolutely, and that would make for a really good art lesson. I will have to, what, what, let me know, Violet Sky, what, okay, you said painting, so I could probably do a quick acrylic uh, Christmas light. Hold on, let me add that to, I had a paper list somewhere earlier. Here's the one, didn't have writing on it. Um, do I have a pencil that will show up? Oh, here we do. Here we do. Yeah, okay. I have a Christmas or like a wintry, a bird holding a bell with, it's a firm, the, it's going to be in the Color Pencil Magazine for December. It's an issue, the lesson, but I've got the video to go along with it for Patreon. Um, so that will be a colored pencil Christmas one. We'll do a, an acrylic Christmas lights, um, like a, a, yes, yes. Okay. Um, it's easier for me to do a lesson than to try to explain. JT said, is it worth it to join an artist collective if I don't have a large body of work? I don't know. I, they're all going to be different. Find out what they, what do they offer? What can they do for you? Don't join in the, what can I do for them? What can they do for you? What benefit would you get out of it? Would it encourage you to paint more? Then that might be worth it right there. You know, it, look into what they offer. What do they charge to be a part of it? Like how involved are you going to be? That may be a good or a bad thing depending on your time schedule. So I, you, they are not all the same. So look into what they, they can do for you. Angela said, can you tell us about your journey to becoming a professional artist and how you decided to become an art teacher on Patreon to teach people the right way to do things? Um, yeah, so I decide, I painted all the time. So this story, I've, I've told this before. I'll, I'll go through, I'll do the short version. Um, I was very sick as a child. I had celiac disease, but we did not know that back in, you know, the 80s, late 70s, going into the 80s and 90s. No one knew. So that wasn't a thing that people really tested for. So we didn't know I was sick all the time. I had no immune system. But, and I don't want to make it sound like I had some terrible childhood. I got to ride my bike sometimes, but I was sick often enough that I would sit and draw. My mom gave me coloring books or crayons and the back of a, we had brown paper bags back then for the grocery store. So I was always drawing on those. Um, yeah, that is, I just drew all the time. I was so sick all the time and so tired all the time that that is what I enjoyed doing. And when I, once I became, so like going into a teenager, I started taking it more seriously and actually started trying harder. And when I was 19, I was at the beach with a friend. We're walking down at Laguna Beach in Southern California. And there was this lady had a setup outside where she was selling her marine life paintings. And they were really terrible. And I looked at that going, I am way better than that. Like her perspective is off. Everything is off. Like, and she's selling these for $5,000 a piece. We're talking back in what, 90, I don't know, it was in the 90s. And I'm like, I'm gonna be rich if she's selling those for 5,000 a piece and I'm better than that. And yeah, that is not how art works. <laughs> she had built a name for herself. She also had the money to have a stand, like a place to sell art at Laguna Beach, which is super rich people area. Like that's one of those places I went to visit, but I always went home at night. Like I'm not staying that, I can't afford to even stay in a hotel down there. 
So anyway, yeah, that was um, what made me decide, you know what, I'm gonna do this for a living because at the time I kind of wanted to go into graphic design. I wanted to do, I was kind of back and forth, wishy-washy. I wanted to train dogs for the police. I really enjoy dog training. So I had a few things that I was like, eh, what do I want to do? And it was, that was my moment of that is it. That is the direction I want to go. So I started teaching online because actually it wasn't even on purpose. I was teaching classes in, purpose, or in person since 98. So um, I had a lot of teaching, teaching experience. I really like teaching painting lessons. And I taught a lot of preteens and teens all the way through adults. But when you're teaching preteens, you have to learn to word things in a way that a preteen is going to understand. So I got really good at explaining things in a way that anybody could understand, a, a more basic way to understand it. One of the things that I find is a lot of people when they're teaching, they overcomplicate things. And I'm watching these videos going, why are you wording it that way? Why are you making it so complicated? Like it is not that hard. You are making it so much harder than it needs to be. So um, no, I started, a friend of mine told me I should start a YouTube channel because I was, I needed some, I wanted to embed the videos onto my website took his advice and it just took off from there. And then some of you guys suggested I make, put the, the time-lapse videos as real-time videos on Patreon. So it's, I started doing that. Then you were asking for voiceovers and Patreon just blew up into a whole thing. Like it was never, I never intended on it becoming what it was, but that, that is like the, the string of events of how my life is where it is now. And Tessa said, hi there, I have a, I have not spoiled the fur babies in a while and chicken. Thank you, Tessa. Oh. You guys want a super chat from Tessa? Yeah? Thank you so much. Oh, I know. I heard that. Oops, I'm knocking things over. There you go. Look at the good cow taking that gently. He bit me earlier pretty good. Like not chomped hard, but he gets too excited about his treats and those ones being small. Yeah, him's doing much better though. That is very good. Okay, thank you, Tessa. Go lay down. Lay down, boys, lay down, down, down. And if anyone wants to know why Wade has a belly band on, he actually has two belly bands on because the bad cow is the baddest of cows. He, a few months back, decided to mark in the house. So like right in front of me, I'm standing there and he's just like, flip my leg on this right now. And it was like, why would you do that after three years? Just randomly, first time ever. Okay. So yeah, he wears a belly band, but then he started shredding the inside of the belly band. So I had to put a second belly band so he couldn't easily, re it's a whole thing. Um, yeah, but he's not injured or anything like that. Some people thought that he had a wound. He's not, he's totally fine. He's just a bad cow. Okay. Um, let's see. JT said, if I oil out an oil painting. What happens then? Do I wait a certain amount of time for a final varnish? You know, I don't ever do that. I don't, I, I don't want to answer because I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I've seen people do it. It's not something I've ever done. So I don't know enough about it to give you good advice there. I know it's not necessary because I, I paint just fine without it. Aline said, could you explain dry brushing? Is it just not adding water to the paint? Trying to Google dry brush painting seems tough to do in realism. Yes, I can actually. That I can easily do a demonstration for you on. So let's come back over here. You guys still could bid on cute guinea pig. Although if you don't, it's okay because I'll just put them on my website for more money. Um, let's see. So let's take, I'm gonna take this brush. And when I load the paint, Let's come over here to the palette. I am not going to get, I don't know which color, we'll use black, the purple. See how I didn't add, a, like I didn't add water and there's not a lot of brush or paint. It's not your normal chunky paint. There's just not much on there. And when I come over to the easel, let's pretend this is a canvas. When you dry brush, you're just lightly going over. It doesn't really show up there. Maybe it would be better over on this one, might actually show better. No, that camera's not showing, huh? Because it's trying to go out of focus. Maybe I can change that. Hold on, let's change all the things because they are not playing nice. Um, one second, Elgato. Nope, that's not the one I need. Camera hub. Let's, nope, it's not Elgato. What am I doing? It is palette. Configure video. Camera control. Do not autofocus. I think that looks about right. 
let's see if it shows. This may not show enough detail to really give you a good, oh, the green is still wet on the other side. But when you do it, you, that's a little too wet, you're just lightly going over it. So what happens when you dry brush? You think, okay, it's a very easy way to shade, but see how it's very grainy and gritty? Like you can see all the little dots. What's happening is the canvas has bumps. They have ridges. Actually, I can this I can do a, dim, a quick drawing of to show you. So that is how you do it. Now, it is a very, very, very easy way to get something that looks like it's shaded. It's done with oil painting, and it can be done in oil painting in a way because oils don't dry the same way. It doesn't look bad with oils if it's done right. It, do, it can look great with oils, but with acrylics, I can dry brush on this canvas because it's so smooth, it doesn't look like dry brushing. It's more like you would get with oils. But what is happening, let's come back over here to the easel. So your canvas has ridges. Let's say you're super zoomed in. When you paint with a dry brush, you are only hitting the tops of these, which means this has paint, this has paint, that does not have paint. So you have little dots of white showing through. So your, your dry brush really just ends up, let's erase this and show better. I'm having issues with my eraser. Your dry brush hits here here, here, it's not getting in all those nooks and crannies. And that's why you get this grainy, gritty, crappy look. If your brush is saturated in paint, the paint is getting down into all those crevices. So you're in that case, you're not getting that grainy, gritty, crappy look. It doesn't look like an amateur painted it. And that's the thing, people will always get mad at me. They're like, no, -uh, it looks good. No, it doesn't. You think it looks good, but trust me, you go to a gallery, like a, a gallery, unless you're doing abstract stuff, you got a different set of rules. But when you're getting into realism, there are very few, there are cases where dry brushing looks great. I'm not saying it never happens. It's rare. There are very few times that dry brushing is the right choice for acrylics. Super smooth canvas, I can do it and you can't even tell it was dry brushed. But the average canvas, like even on a blue label canvas, I'm not going to dry brush a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna throw water in there or more paint so that it gets into all those little hills and valleys of that canvas so I don't have these little dots showing through of the previous layer. It looks like an amateur did it. Seriously, you would not believe how mad people get at me for that. I'm sorry, your work looks like an amateur. You could change it. It doesn't have to. Like people are so married to looking like an amateur for some reason. Like you don't have to be. You can change it and you make your work look good too. But use more paint. The, the dry brushing method is something that beginners do. It is taught to beginners. It is a way that, yeah, you get some shadows. From a distance it can look okay, but you get up anywhere near it and it's like, ooh, that was a beginner for sure. So that's kind of the thing with dry brushing. The main thing is that it's just hitting the tops of the canvas. So the under layer, like if it's white, if it's pink, whatever, is showing through and it looks, it looks sloppy. It looks like you don't know how to manage your paint. And a lot of people, one of my favorite arguments are the people who will say, well, it's, it's acrylics. That's what they're supposed to look like. If you want it to look like oils, just paint with oils. Or I could just learn how to paint with acrylics and work with the medium I like and get the look I like. Turns out you can have both. So yeah, that is, um, it's a weird, like, I don't know why they're so, I, I don't know if it's artists who don't want to improve or they want an excuse to feel like their beginner style, their beginner techniques can be used throughout life and like they never bothered to improve. So they're like justifying not being ever getting good at it. I don't know. I don't know why they don't want to get good at it because it's easy enough to do. But again, I mean, it's art. You do what you want to do. I don't care, but I'm going to laugh behind your back. That's what I'm going to do. So there we go. Okay. Um, let's just say I will never buy a painting that you dry brush the whole thing. Um, here is the next question. Noctis Gamma said, do you have any advice about being too attached to the original art and not wanting to sell them? I'd like to sell my work, but I get attached. Oh dear God, do I understand what you're talking about? So I don't sell them right away then. Uh, you'll get to a point now, I have so, I mean, I have painted thousands and thousands of things in my lifetime. It's easier to not be attached, but I still have paintings I will not let go. I have, um, well, the painting that this is from, that flamingo, he's mine, I'm not selling that. I am not selling, I've got my lion that's roaring with the, the coral and stuff. 
he's not for sale. Um, I mean, I guess if someone wants to pay enough, they can have it. But, you know, some of these paintings were six weeks worth of work. No one wants to pay, pay what six weeks worth of work is actually worth. So, I mean, you want to pay $7,500 for that painting? Sure. But realistically, no one, it, I, unless I get it into a gallery, no one's going to do that. So, um, I just don't sell it until, hold on, I didn't, oh God. That I closed the, the thing that I needed but I just don't make it available for sale until I'm less attached to it because you do want to be realistic with the price as well so let's say I've got a giraffe um, is he still in here did I move him I think he's still over there um, a giraffe painting with butterflies it I painted this I want to say it was like 2014 right around there I love this painting I love so, it so much I'm just now almost 10 years later ready to sell it I've sold other things, but I just couldn't let that one go for a reasonable price. Like it's not worth $10,000, but I wasn't going to let it go for under that. So let's just not be a crazy person. I'm not going to list it at $10,000. I'll just hang on to it, enjoy it until I'm ready. And now I've got other paintings I want to put in its place. So now I need, I do need to put that up on my website, but yeah, I just made it not available because I was too attached, but the more you paint, it does, I promise it gets easier. Especially if you're painting for some, when you do a lot of commissions, you know you're not keeping that painting, that also makes it way easier to let it go. We also have Dylan Creative Arts said, hello, Wade and Gibson. She also put, um, and hello, Lisa, I forgot to type her name. You boys, boys want a super chat? Come here, thank you so much. Oh, look, I already have it out. I have one out for you. Oh, nice and gentle, cow. You're, why are you wet? Did brother drool on you? You should not be wet on your neck. You couldn't have done it. Thank you so much. Okay, boys, go lay down. Lay down. Is it in your teeth? Go lay down. Lay down. Lay down. I'm liking these smaller treats for um, the Super Chats because they're not get, they're not sending, sending their choking on them because I gave them too big of a piece like I typically do. That's kind of working out better. I need to look for that when I replace those ones. We may look for another brand. Okay. Let's see. We've got, you guys have good questions tonight. Thank you. I'm really excited to paint Christmas lights too. Okay. Um, Jason said, have you ever done a combination of different types of paint to create depth, uh, different depths? Um, I've mixed them before because there was a color I wanted or like when I've done the liquid, I, no, I think I just stuck with mostly Liquitex soft body. No, I probably put heavy or uh, basics on top. Um, no, not to create different depths. I, if I did it, it was just a matter of, I, I happened to have a color I wanted in another brand, but I don't even buy other paints anymore. So I just stick with the Liquitex Basics, but um, no, I can't think of, I've painted so much. I'm not going to say it's not possible. I just can't think of a time. Um, Art of Raven D said, how do you balance time between messages and painting? Sounds hectic to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, messages, m editing and painting is the bigger problem I have. But yeah, the, it definitely, I go through, like try to once a week go check messages that don't come. I don't always get notifications for my Patreon messages. So that's annoying. I get some of them and I'll go because I got a new message and I'll go, you know, an hour later, go to check it. And it's like, oh, here's more from the last three weeks that we never sent you a notification on. So thanks for that, Patreon. But yeah, um, I've been doing, one of the things I started doing is taking five minutes to respond to YouTube comments every day. Because I look at all the comments and I'm like, I can't respond to everybody. I can hit the like button really quick, but I don't have time to like, when you start responding, it feels overwhelming. So what I started doing and it actually got me caught up is every day, five minutes. I just set the timer, five minutes, good to go. Um, and I'm getting caught up like in a really good way. So setting like a timer, I'm gonna work on messages, I'm gonna work on emails from this time to this time and that's it. I'll get what I can get done. When I used to do it where I was like, I'm gonna respond to every single message, everything right now, it, it takes too much time. So the setting a little timer, like a five or 10 minute, that has been working out really well for me the last couple of weeks. Um, where are we? Baby Panda said, can you do an acrylic pour video sometime? I would love to see that. I have some videos already on YouTube, but I need to do more for sure. I don't do them in a live stream because it's, it's so messy. Oh my God, do I make a mess. And it's like the actual pour time, it's like, and 10 minutes, you're done. Now you let it dry for three days before you can paint anything over it if you wanted to use it as a background. Um, what I think I wanna do, I actually keep thinking this 
I plan on doing it before, but I didn't have the three days to let it dry. Um, record, pre-record the pour. It's still like I've done before for the oil painting and such. Record that, all, or it wasn't the oil paint, one of the paintings I did that was. Pre-record the pour portion so I can play that at the beginning of the live stream and then during the live stream paint over it would be a possibility. Um, Cat's art pick. There are so, uh, some things that I can create in colored pencils and only some things I I can only paint in acrylics. Any idea why that's happening? Uh, certain things and certain techniques are just easier with one medium than another. So that doesn't surprise me. Like this guinea pig, not just an issue of the size, which you can still bid on, by the way. Look at, is he not adorable? Little guinea pig. Anyway, moving on. Um, link is in the video description. Um, anyway, moving on. What was the question? I just distracted myself. Okay, the fur. If I would have done that in colored pencil, even if I did it tiny in colored pencil, I'm not getting that done in an hour. Like there is no way. Certain things, certain techniques, the certain brushes are just easier to do in a different medium. Now that doesn't mean it's not possible. It's just that you have to understand going in. If I want to create that look of fur with colored pencil, I'm going to spend days, not an hour. So, and then there's certain things with colored pencil that I just find to be easier in that than with acrylics, like little teeny tiny detail, and maybe more time consuming, but it's also a lot easier to do with colored pencils. So I, I'm imagining that's what it is. And the more you paint and draw, the more you'll get to where you can do it in either medium, but you have to go into it understanding one is just gonna take a lot longer to do certain things in. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, what home printer do you have? I am looking for a Black Friday deal. You do not want what I have. It's a piece of crap. It's like the cheapest thing I could find because I really only use it for printing Patreon, the labels for my, the cards, for shipping labels is what I do. This is like, that ink did not soak in that watercolor paper very well, but that's why it's like so light because the print, the coloring page was actually a lot darker, but whatever, it's good enough for what I needed. So I don't know what it is. I think it's a Hewlett, Hewlett, no, it's, it's Canson. It is a I think it's Canson. I don't know. It's a piece of crap. It's the cheapest thing I could find. So you don't want it. <laughs> um, Oreo Beagle said, have you tested golden open acrylics? I think someone gave me some and I did like a quick swatch, but I don't want my acrylics to dry slower than they already do. Like basics and my water, my fine mist sprayer is all I need. Open acrylics are a weird texture. It's just, I've never tried to do, I, I know for certain while I've tested little things, I've never done a full project. So I can't give you like, this is the most amazing thing ever. I'm going to reserve the right to try them someday and be like, this is the most amazing thing ever. But I like the way I paint now. Like I, I, I don't have complaints about how fast this dries. I actually would complain if it dried slow, dried too much slower. So no, I've not done any projects. I should though. I should test them. So at least I have like a reason, no explanation. Uh, Art of Raven Days said, I have a question on the usage of painting your pets. If someone is no longer subscribed, does the person who used, used painted your pet have to take the artwork they did of your pet done? No. So let's say you were a member and you had rights to use my pet, that photo, and you painted it while you were a member. Absolutely. Go for it. But if you canceled, you can't go back and take photos. Like you can't go back and grab uh, or use current photos that you weren't currently a member for, if that makes sense. Um, but like, let's say you painted something while you are a member. Absolutely, you're fine then. You can post it now. You can print it, whatever. Whatever you want to do um, with the work that you took while you were a member. Linda said, I got my kitty painting from you. Thank you so much for the freebies in it. I love the cards and stickers and such. Yay! Um, let's see. Fly Me to the Moon said, I have seen canvas rolls. Artists cut off a piece and create their art and then sell it that way. What do you think of that? Um, it's a good way for shipping, especially if you're doing overseas, because some things like Australia, somebody bought, this was years ago, so I'm sure it's even worse now. They bought, it was a 16 by 20 inch canvas. If I was to ship it, the cam, the painting was $450. So it wasn't a super expensive, I want to say it was like $450. It cost more for shipping that to Australia than what the painting cost. The cost of shipping from the US, I don't know how, I know artists who ship things from like Wales over here and it doesn't cost that, it like they can afford to do it. We didn't do that from the US to you guys like that. It is such a challenge to anything of any bulk, but I was able, I want to say it was closer to $50, $80, maybe it was $80. I don't remember what it was now. Heck, maybe it was $20, but I was able to roll it in a tube and send it to them that way. And then they could take it into a framer and have the framer 
re-stretch it over stretcher bars. So no, it is a good way to go. You don't have to worry about it being, like chances of being damaged that way in shipping are almost non-existent. So way safer, but the, the customer does have to then go through the trouble of having it re-stretched or framed. So there's that, but no, it, it's, there's, a, there's certainly some benefits to doing it that way. But most customers like, like in the US, most um, here it's, it can be bad to ship depending on the size, but most people would rather just get something and they can that day hang it on the wall. So they don't wanna go through the trouble of putting it on stretcher bars. So I don't personally sell it that way. But like in the case of the one painting, I just, I took the staples out and, and I mean, the this edges of the paint, the canvas, I left it all there. So whoever re-stretched it had some material to work with, but yeah, that's, um, it's certainly, a, a, there, there's some benefits. Brittany Daniels said, I currently own an HP OfficeJet Pro 9010E that has a scanner attached to it, but it takes too long to get it to turn on and then use afterwards. Yeah, mine, I have the same problem with mine, but the ink dries immediately. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Can't complain about that part. Um, let's see. I never even do said I just went back and realized I butchered my question. <laughs> I bought a few small canvases for 99 cents each. I just have to prime them and eventually get stretchers on board. Yeah, it. I don't like, so Michael, or not Michael's, I think they did too, but Hobby Lobby used to sell big rolls of Frederick's canvases. And I bought it when it was on clearance. Maybe it was Michael's. It would have been longer. I don't know, whatever. But at one point I did buy it when they clearanced out this huge roll of, like super big roll of, canvas and the funny thing is no this was hobby lobby because i remember got i got in an argument with an employee over this he insisted you saved so much money getting the stretcher bars and stretching it yourself no you don't because you're not factoring in the amount of wasted canvas you have if you get now at the time so it could it could be different but at the time I could go down to Azel Art Supply who had every canvas. They were always 50% off with the Fredericks. And they, I mean, they had such good stuff. I hate that they went out of business. Um, I hate that these small businesses don't keep up with the times. Like they're, that business should not have gone out of business. It went out of business because they made stupid choices. Um, it could, they, if they would have kept up, if they would have like gotten one of their employers, hired someone to be a YouTuber, to make videos for them, to do demonstrations in the store and really promote that on social media, they could have, there's no reason that should have gone out of business. But anyway, that's a whole other rant. Um, this is what happens when companies are like, no, we're just gonna keep doing things the way we always did, even though that's not the way that works anymore. And then be surprised about it. But anyway, um, they, I, at the time, I could just go get a half price canvas over at Azel. I didn't have any wasted canvas. I didn't have to buy the stretcher bars. I didn't have to go through the staples, buy the staple, and buy all that stuff. So I do own all that stuff now, but you still have the cost of the staples. You have the cost of the stretcher bars and you have to factor in the cost of how much wasted canvas. So let's say, I mean, you, if you've ever wrapped a Christmas paper or a Christmas present, how much wasted paper do you end up with? because you only needed a certain size for that project. No, I, I'm sure that Fredericks has this down to a science and when they're stretching them in house, they are not ending up with a lot of extra wasted canvas. However, when you're doing this at home, we're not pros at that. We're gonna have a lot of wasted canvas because we don't know how to cut the perfect sizes for the frame size, we, it's a thing. You're not saving money when you factor that in. And so, yeah, I, it's not something, it was kind of fun to do because I just am weird and I do like stretching canvases, but it's also, I didn't find it to save that much money. Now on the flip side, let's say you live in an area where you don't have access to the good canvases. It may be more cost efficient for you because of shipping costs to buy a big roll, buy the stretcher bars and then assemble it yourself just in shipping alone. I don't know, it depends. You know, you have to factor all this in. So at the time when I was arguing with that person and I was definitely right because they weren't an artist, but um, no, at the time it wouldn't have saved me any money. So anyway, that's, that is my story about that. Um, oops, I just lost Discord. Um, Python said, my golden heavy body acrylics are coming in a few days. I'm so excited. Would a regular mist sprayer work? No, and that's what I, I say. See, I say this all the time. You've not been listening. No, um, what happens with a regular spray bottle? You get heavy, heavy droplets. And so when those go on there and you take your, your 
blending brush and you go over there, this is going to pick up those heavy droplets and now you've got a hole where that paint was. Like it, it lifts the paint up, up in weird ways. You need a fine mist sprayer because that's gonna give you those tiny, tiny droplets or an airbrush would work too. You don't want those heavy droplets that a regular spray bottle gets. Um, Boy Me to the Moon said, how would you go about painting from a roll? Put it on a board and tape it to it? Yeah. Um, Exactly. Put it on the board and tape it all the way around the edges is how I would do that. Oh, I mean a regular mist spray bottle. It sprays mist, but it's not a fine mist sprayer. It's probably the same. I bet you it's the same thing, just labeled different. I would be very surprised if it wasn't. Um, yeah, ink cartridges are so ridiculous. And honestly, that is why I don't bother getting, I don't do prints myself here because the ink is so insanely expensive. I actually found it to be more cost efficient to buy something from like G Clay Today or one of these other places because they can buy, they buy their ink in bulk, plus they're using better ink than what I'm going to use on a home printer. Now, some people like, I think Lena Dania's one, she's got a super nice printer if I remember correctly. But like the cost of the ink and the cost, like it's you, it, excuse me, I burp because I'm a classy, classy lady. It's really expensive. I'll have to ask her. I don't remember what she's got right now. Um, but it is very, that ink is not, she, like it is expensive. And so, yeah, I just order mine from like she clay today when I want to do that. Um, let's see. Python said I mean, okay, I got that one. Yeah, I know, and I, I, I'm fairly certain it's Lena that I'm thinking of had one that was really, really expensive. I need to remember to ask her. Um, normally, we just talk about plants, but um, yeah, it's been a while since, I, since, so I could be wrong on who it was. I'm pretty sure it's her, and if it's her, she may have a video talking about it, so you may look up Lena Dania on YouTube and see printer or something like that. She might have talked about it in a video. Um, it would actually surprise me if she didn't, if she has one. Um, so Wade, stop. No chewing your feet, but they're itchy. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, the printer that I use, I just refilled the black ink because I don't use any of the rest. Like I don't use it for color anything. So I used to, I remember years ago trying to print a portfolio and it was really just an old photo book and I was, God, I'm old. Um, it was an old photo album that everybody's mom had or grandmother, depending on how old you are. And we had, um, I would just print it with that and then stick it in that and use that as a portfolio to bring around and show to people. Now <laughs> I'm like, here's my photos on my phone. It, God, I love technology sometimes. Um, it's certainly a much better way to go. Um, let's see. All right, Raven D said, I like the idea of mail ordering prints, but some sites, local shops will not print some of my artwork due to their nature. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see that. So I got to save up for a good printer um, someday. That, yeah, I can certainly see that. So in your case, you'd probably be worth it. Uh, Violet Sky said, when you paint the Christmas lights, can you show colored lights too? Yeah, I want to do colored ones. I actually just finally did. I never hang lights on my house. Um, I got some for around my doorway. I used the hot glue gun because the brick and glued it in. So yeah, I'm like kind of obsessed with the colored Christmas lights. Like the, it reminds me of being a kid, like back in the eighties, like early eighties anyway, it was like the bright, every color of lights. Yeah. I want to, I'll see if I can find some photos um, to use of that. Um, or maybe I can find a good reference photo where it's already, somebody else took a good photo, hopefully. Um, 9.59. So we are good. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. And if somebody did want this or couldn't get the bidding to work, just email me, lisa at lawcree.com if you want the guinea pig for $75. And let's see. What else? Next week is going to be the critique. I'll post about it over on Patreon starting again with the teal tier and I'll work my way down. Um, and what else? Is there anything else? Check out our moderator's channels. Links are in the video description. We've got live streams. I know Nick just had his digital painting. He followed one of my lessons, so that is very cool. And I will see you guys next Wednesday. I feel like I'm forgetting something else, but I don't know what it is. I'm sure I am. Bye. Mm -hmm.